thumbnail. Gotta get that thumbnail in. Sorry, you can come across now. This video is filmed in front of a live studio audience. So I'm coming at you live from Paramount Studio lot today in front of a live studio audience. Everyone. <laughs> I'm imagining like an arena cheering. Imagine filming <laughs> filming a YouTube video like in an arena with like a, a crowded arena just sitting there t talking and filming yourself with an iPhone. Can you, you fucked up the audio by shaking your collar around like that. Fucking and filming yourself with the- Now people are gonna be like, what was that? My dog is down there. Ow. Oh fuck. <laughs> that was just so I can sync the mic and the uh, visual for you guys. <laughs> um, so I'm in the forest and it's raining and it's thurs Thursday. Thursday is the day of the week that it currently is. I think it's about 1 p.m. Maybe, I don't know. I'm feeling really scared and really weird really fucking weird day um i my i have severe brain fog i think it's probably from all the weed i've been smoking i'm not even gonna lie Smoke weed every day. <sighs> i like don't want to give the wrong impression of who i am but i'm starting to think that that wrong impression is just correct and i have like a delusional understanding of who and what i am i know i said in like two videos ago that i was a major stoner because i am a major fucking stoner bro <laughs> I, what was that that was a joke i'm not but the past few days i have been doing doing it every day because my anxiety has just been crazy i've been feeling really cooped up inside At the beginning of this week there was what is was called a atmospheric river <laughs> Oh, so it's been raining the entire week and it's made me feel so lazy and so tired. I've been like, I've been like exhausted, but not tired. Like there needs to be a word for that where like when you're tired, but you like don't want to sleep. Like if you tried to go to sleep, you couldn't. Hence why I've been smoking so much weed. There needs to be like a word for that feeling. Which I, I guess there is. It's depression, but I... I don't think I'm depressed. I'm def. I'm definitely not depressed. I decided to get some food. I, you know, I was feeling hungry and I thought, hmm, what, when I get home, what am I gonna cook? Because, you know, I, no, normally I would get home and I'd make something healthy. I'd make a smoothie, a uh, salad. I got some tofu in the fridge that I pressed last night and, because I was gonna use it, but then I, I keep on doing this thing where I, like, I feel hungry. So I'll start making food or I'll even make food. And then when it gets time to like, you know, eat it or whatever. 
What else would I do? <laughs> Shove it up my butt. <laughs> I just don't feel hungry anymore. But then I thought, no, this is my day. This is my day and I'm going to eat a meal that is going to make me so sick. It's not even gonna be funny. So I went to the local a and I think this is maybe, I think this is, is this a Canadian? No, I don't know. Is this a Canadian thing? Tim Hortons and a and I'm like, okay, that's a Canada thing. But then one time I went to New York and I saw a Tim Hortons there, as well as I think an a and and my mind was blown. Mm. Oh, and then I drove across the street over to the McDonald's and I, I, I went there for this. I got a strawberry milkshake, but then I was like, I can't just get a strawberry milkshake. I also had my a &W bag and I was hiding it because I was like, I don't want them to think I'm like... <laughs> I don't want them to think I'm like a, like a, a what's it, like a glutton. I left one of the seven deadly sins and what if Jesus is working at the McDonald's cashier counter? Then I'm going to hell. But I also got a small fry, just because I was like, I, I, did, I don't want to just get a drink. That's... Oh, I have to charge my battery. Oh, fuck. So we are starting the my productive day in my life at 10.15 in the morning because I just woke up. I think what I've decided is, uh, you know, for this winter, I am getting on a one-way flight to I don't give a fuck Afghanistan. Like, I, I don't care. We're doing productivity, but in my way. I did it my way. I'm never gonna be able to wake up at six. That's just not me. That's not who I am. I think I just need to accept that I am a night owl and I will, s my sleep schedule is about to become 4 a.m. to like 11 and I don't give, I don't care. I don't care. I'll probably am about to dig myself way deeper into this depression pit that I'm not in, let's say. I'm not depressed. I swear to God, but we're about to start digging. But today I just have some breakfast here. I, I made overnight oats, but I made them with like some new oats that are like chunky, like they're chunky, ch big chunky oats. I don't know how to ex else to explain it. And they did not goop overnight. I took a bite and I said, oh. So I just made some toast and a delicious smoothie. And then I have a little bit of coffee. And a tangerine. Just kidding. <laughs> Could you imagine I just took a big bite out of it? <laughs> without peeling it? <laughs> I'm crazy! That'd be fucking crazy! I'm crazy! That'd be fucking crazy, man! First thing on the docket today, I need to clean my bedroom real bad. I need to do a big workout. I think that's a big reason why I haven't been sleeping. I'm gonna try to run a 10k, which... I might die. And then we've also got a bit of reading to do. Oh my god, my camera's gonna die! <sighs> Let me charge this. <laughs> so gorgeous. Bitch. Fucking shitheads. Bunch of fucking assholes. Let me fucking film this shit for your fucking entertainment. You need to leave. Okay. Hola, mis amores. Um, I am. <laughs> so, okay. Well, that's the time. Can you get the, Can you get that? 2.53 in the morning at night. What? Um, as you saw in the last clip, it snowed today. I think it's just gonna be like a fluke. Like it was just, it was very random and within the next few days, it will be gone. Thank God. And then come January, shit's gonna get crazy. But I woke up this morning and I had a horrible headache. I don't know what from, but it kept me in bed all day. Like that's why it's so late is because I've been sleeping all day. And now it's 3 a.m. and I'm 
wide awake. But yesterday I got home and I edited this video, this very video that you just watched up until uh, about a, maybe a minute ago. I, I've been filming for four minutes, but I've been pausing a lot and punishing myself every time I mess up. So I've, I've got to cut those out, obviously. <laughs> But I did, I did run. I did, I, I don't know if I cut this out because I've been cutting a lot of shit out of this video because I've just been, this week has just been so fucking weird. Time does not feel real. I need to never smoke weed ever again. This week I feel like was a bit of an experiment uh, to see what that stuff does to me if I, if I do it <laughs> every single day. And I've realized it makes me think that time and space all just blends into one little orb that exists floating in the air, uh, just above my head, like a little Sims gem. Because I was editing this video yesterday, and I genuinely thought that I was editing a video from like two weeks ago, and then I would say something that made me realize that it, it was, I, I just, I had just filmed it yesterday. I was like, holy shit, wait, what? That's me from yesterday? I don't remember doing any of this. <laughs> I don't know if I cut this out, but I did say that I wanted to run a 10k because that is what I used to always do. I probably haven't done it in over a month and that was usually my standard. In fact, about a month ago when I stopped running, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm gonna amp it up to 12k. That's the goal. But yesterday I did run a 10k with ease in like an hour. I'll put my stats up. I felt really good. And then yeah, I woke up this morning, I felt like I was dehydrated and exhausted and hungry, starving, but I had no appetite. However, I did finish some books this week that I'd like to talk about. The first one being Rachel. Okay, shut the fuck up. Like, yeah, this is, this book is called Rachel. No, this is second place by Rachel Cusk. Okay, Rachel Cusk, new favorite author alert, possibly maybe. This is a short one and it is just about three couples. There's an older couple who own this property where they have their home and they also have a second place, which is just like, like a little cabin on their property where they rent out to artists and they'll like send out messages. She's very like the woman, the, the, the wife, very artsy girl, very much so into art and literature, but she often will send out little messages to artists or authors or people that she admires to be like, hey, come to, we have this cool place that you can stay. Very isolated, very rural. I hate saying that word, rural. And basically one day in France, 15 years ago, she stumbles upon this exhibit and it is paintings from this artist. His name is just the letter L. I don't know. <laughs> and she ends up writing to Elle and they develop a correspondence with each other. And he comes and stays with them, but he brings his girlfriend. And I, oh. oh, that's a spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> Mini spoiler. But then also, this couple, they have a daughter named Justine, and their daughter is kind of struggling a bit. She's like in her early 20s. She's got no job, raggedy hip, poor digestion, gay baby daddy. <laughs> But her and her partner come and stay with them. And I think that what I loved the most about this was just Rachel Cusk's ability to put words to feelings that are quite universal but not really talked about too much. I don't know, I just got such a, like, a powerful sense of these characters' feelings and where they were at mentally without like explaining it. I also read Brain on Fire by Susanna Cahalan. This is a memoir. And I thought this was so great, so good, so much fun, so interesting written so well. The cover is horrible. Sorry, but like, what is that? <laughs> I've had this book for years and I finally picked it up just a couple days ago and I read it in two days. And I've come to realize that I think a massive reason why it's taking me so long is because this cover is just really quite atrocious. Like you're a beautiful girl, like obviously this is a beautiful girl, but this looks like it was just like taken on a MacBook and it feels like she was just like feeling herself. Maybe she was in like the middle of a Zoom meeting. She was playing with the filters on Zoom. She found the black and white one. <laughs> Like, you better not be serving cunt on the cover of a book about the most traumatic thing that's ever happened to you when I get there. My dumbass. <laughs> but basically, Susanna is a journalist, and at the time that this story begins, I think she's 24, and she's working at the New York Post, the newspaper as a journalist, which is fucking, like, huge as a 24-year-old. That's very impressive. But she very randomly starts developing some very strange symptoms, like one side of her body starts going numb. She convinces herself that she has bed bugs and she's hallucinating and just overall very sick. Basically enters 
extreme psychosis and gets admitted to a hospital at NYU. And her symptoms are quite the anomaly. It's like every single symptom in the DSM-5 she experiences in stages. Doctor after doctor after doctor that comes and studies her case and tries to give her the help that she needs. And the diagnosis that her and her family so badly yearn for so that they can start treating her. I mean, she becomes very, very close to death. But this is also so interestingly written and so singular to like a memoir, I feel like, because she doesn't remember most of what happened during that month. So for her, this is, you know, a story about her life and her experience, but also investigative journalism. And she's trying to piece together with interviews from her family and doctors and, and videos and diary entries that she wrote while she was in the hospital. What happened to her? Because she doesn't really know, you know, she has a, a general idea, obviously, but she was gone for a month. And I just thought it was so well done, so, so interesting. It, it takes you on this like really wild journey and you feel like you're there with her. It kind of felt like I was discovering this story as I do with every story, but at the same time as she was discovering this story, which was super interesting. I also, ooh, I also this morning, um, not this morning, I guess this morning, it was when I woke up. So around like 4, 4 p.m. this morning, I picked up Demon Copperhead, and this has just gripped the shit out of me. The prose is like some of the best I've ever read. I cannot believe this writing exists. It's like this perfect combination of perfection. I don't know how to explain it. Like professionalism and seriousness and oh, it's so dark. This book is so dark, but it's also so funny and witty. It's quite dirty. There's a lot of like dark humor. I've been underlining little lines that are couldn't be more different. Like on page six, it says, this line is what made me be like, okay, this is a book. This is gonna be a book. Demon is a little boy and he's thinking that his mom wished to have a girl. And he says, why a girl? Was that what she really wanted? Some pink package that would make her get her act together? Like I wasn't breakable? And then like, Six pages later. Advice to anyone with the plan of naming your kid Junior. Going through life as a mini you will be as thrilling as finding dried up jizz on the carpet. <laughs> but then I think this line is such a great combination of that like heartbreaking darkness as well as so much wit. It says, if you're surprised a mom would discuss boyfriend hotness with a kid still learning not to pick his nose, you've not seen the far end of lonely. But basically this book is about Demon Copperhead. It's kind of a play on David Copperfield, of course. That would be like so weird if it wasn't. <laughs> but it's like a contemporary David Copperfield where Demon is living in a trailer park with his single mother um, who had him at I think 18. She's working at Walmart. She's an addict and an alcoholic trying to get her life together, trying to be sober. And it's just exactly the type of book that I love. It's just chronicling this this family, this little community. Demon is really close to the family that his mother rents the trailer from, and they live on the same property. There's so much complicated messiness and drama. People are in jail, people are getting fucking murdered. It's in the deep south, so the politics are pretty... I'm only 50 pages into this, like, I think nearly 600 page book, but I can tell that I'm just gonna love it and read it. So quick. I think I'm honestly gonna edit this last bit right now and see if I can get this up today, but also tomorrow. Cause tomorrow, today, it's 3.33 a.m. right now. So today is today, but it's also tomorrow. Cause I haven't gone to sleep yet, but it is technically Sunday. So yeah, thank you for watching. Thank you so much for being here. Bye. See you on the next vlog.